Let's take a look at Thursday in the NBA. There are six games on. Who do we stream in? Who's in? Who's out? What do we need to pay attention to? Well, we need to pay attention to Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm currently training for the XL World Championships. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So go and hit the thumb up, go and ring the bell, go and double bang it, go and subscribe and leave your comments. That's a great way of going out and helping the show. We are smack bang in the middle of week 20. Don't know where your playoffs are at. They might be rolling. Mine are. They might be starting soon. Al. But we've got to pay attention to what we're doing streaming wise. We've got to be ruthless with cuts. We've got to be smart with ads. We've got to make the right moves at the right time because the wrong move, honestly, look, it, it can cost you. So let's talk about what we're looking at on Thursday. There are the six games on the first game. Could be a cracker. It is the Phoenix Suns and the Boston Celtics. In Boston, the Suns have a pretty strong schedule to end the week. Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Three games, four nights, end of the week. So while Royce O'Neal is being dropped in a lot of spots, I do understand that. Getting three games in four nights, I don't know whether Beal or or Booker or Durant will have any rests or anything. But even if you get 28 minutes of O'Neal, three games in four nights, that's pretty interesting. Then next week's rough because they don't play Monday, Tuesday. They play just the three games. Whereas Boston goes Thursday, Sunday this week. And then they play four games the week after, ending it with a back-to-back. But also, remember, back-to-back in the middle here. So they go Thursday, Sunday, and then Sunday, Monday, and then Friday, Saturday, which, of course, is a big issue because we know that they're going to sit, guys. Nasir Little will be out for Phoenix. I don't expect that a Kogi plays. Eric Gordon's questionable, but what we do know is that Christos Porzingis is out without hamstring strain. So it's a legitimate injury. He's been out since the weekend. You would have to expect that he sits Sunday as well because that is leading into the back-to-back. So maybe he's there Monday, and then he'll sit one of the Friday, Saturday, at the end of next week. So it's a rough period here for Porzingis, obviously. Jalen Brown is questionable again with his back issue. That did cause him to miss the last game. I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem, um, but I do think he'll sit at least one of the upcoming two back-to-backs. And Horford missed the last game. He's going to return. So he's going to have value here with Porzingis out. And maybe he has value even on Sunday. As a long-term guy, the only time you can use Horford is when one of the starters is out, but one of the starters is out, and they might be out on Sunday. The problem is Horford will sit on Monday. So next week's four-game week looks like it'll turn into a two-game week for Horford. So that's not going to be worth a hold. Or, Porzingis plays Sunday, sits Monday, so Horford then plays Monday, sits Sunday. It's all up in the air. Like We know he's missing games. Out of the next six, Horford's going to play four of them. How many of them are big and how many of them are in place of Porzingis and how many of them are in this week versus next week? It's an unknown question at this point, which is frustrating. So we, we want to see O'Neal, who stunk last game, but the role was pretty solid. But was that because Eric Gordon was out or is he going to just play 29 a night every night? Well, for the Celtics, Sam Howes' last two games were amazing. And with Porzingis out again, is it him that gets the big boost? We know Horford's going to get a boost, but does Howser get it? Does Cornette get it? Don't know. They've been giving a little bit more to bowl in that second unit. No one's really scoring much for Phoenix there. So in deeper leagues, looking for a bit of scoring, you can look to bowl bowl. And of course, Al Horford gets the gigantic boost with Christos Porzingis out again. The next one is the Clippers. They are taking on the Chicago Bulls. Of course, we had that mystery scenario yesterday with uh, Kawhi Leonard just booting, saying, see you guys, I'll catch you on the flip side. Then it was revealed that he did have back spasms earlier in the day, actually for a couple of days. Now, I... Don't think that Kawhi is going to play all three of these games. They go Thursday, Friday, Sunday, the Clippers. And then next week, it's Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So another one of those teams that doesn't play Monday, Tuesday. The Bulls only have two more games this week, Thursday, Saturday. But they are playing Wednesday to lead into this. And then next week, they have a three-game week, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. 
Kawhi did join the team on the road trip. That we didn't know that he would, but he did. He was on the plane. I would say there's almost no chance he plays both of these games, Thursday, Friday. And if you're going to put it one way, I would expect Kawhi sits the game on Thursday. But we don't know that. Westbrook will be out. While for the Bulls, Julian Phillips is still questionable for Wednesday. Torrey Craig is probable for Wednesday. Um, so I'm going to put Phillips as questionable for Thursday. I'm also going to put Craig as questionable for Thursday just because he's coming off a knee injury and it is a back-to-back. So we'll see whether he plays. And if he's out, Tory and Phillips plays, and Phillips might get more. I don't think they go to more Drummond. That's a shocking matchup to play Drummond and Vooch together. But we'll find out. So I don't think that'll be a thing, but it might be a boost to someone like uh, a Julian Phillips for those of you in the uh, in the big in the big bad deep formats. Norman Powell's what we want to watch for the Clippers because if Kawhi's missing, well, we already know that he's getting a boost with Westbrook out, but if Kawhi's missing, it's an even bigger boost for Powell. Um, so we're going to watch that for him. And then guys, other guys that can get boosted might be Terrence Mann, who is like a 25 minute a night guy. But if Kawhi's out, does he play 30? Does he take a couple of extra shots? Get a steal? Maybe an assist extra? And if we hear that Kawhi is going to miss more than one game, that's an extra boost there for Terrence. Oyodosumu continues to get that boost in Chicago. Alex Crusoe has been struggling a little bit. doesn't really impact the minutes, but we know if they're going to cut anyone's minutes because of blowouts or whatever, it is always going to be Caruso first because he's the more likely guy to get hurt and they try to preserve that as they rightfully should. The next game we look at is the Washington Wizards and the Houston Rockets. A lot of intrigue in this one. From a fantasy streaming perspective, the Wizards have a good schedule. Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Three games, four nights. They then go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday next week. So while it's only a three-game week, it ends on Saturday. So we're talking about the final four nights of this week plus the first six of next week. So you're talking about six games, ten nights for the Wizards. The Rockets play Thursday, Saturday this week and then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday the week after. Marvin Bagley is going to be out. I'm expecting Landry Shamet, who left the last game with a calf strain to be out. That's not official yet. Rashawn Holmes, we thought, was going to be a great pickup with Bagley out. And of course, he sprained his toe. I We don't have the official update there. He's missed two in a row. I would suggest that that toe sprain is going to leave him closer to doubtful than questionable. Shingun is out for the season. I'm not going to include him on this injury list anymore. He's not coming back. And then Cam Whitmore is out with that LCL sprain. So what's on my radar? Corey Kispert is. Because they've been starting him with Holmes out. And I expect Holmes to be out again. So Kispert's worth looking up for us. And then for the Rockets, Jalen Green. Does that rebound rate continue to rise? Does the assist rate rise with no Shengun? What about efficiency and shooting? He's got an opportunity here to put up some good numbers. They're also boosting the Wizards are Bilal Kulabali, who is doing little bits and pieces right across the box score, which is useful for us. I'd love to see more of his usage jump up, but that's not quite there. But I love that he's getting involved in other areas, and he is at least, with especially with his strong schedule, a pretty solid ad. And then um, the big fella, Jock Landale, for Houston, I don't know that he starts. He probably doesn't, especially against a small lineup like Kyle Kuzma at center. But we saw big minutes for Landau last time out. He's at least worth looking at, I think. Amen Thompson's by far a better permanent player than Landau, and that's who I would go with. But Landau is a 12-team league option, and I, I have added him in, in 12-team leagues. And uh, fingers crossed, it works out. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the number one fantasy sports app in America with over 3 million members. It is the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS as well. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on between two to six individual player stat projections and hopefully you watch those winnings roll in. They've also got demon time now on prize, prize, not prize picks, prize picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct answers and that turns 10 bucks into 1,000. You've got the Demons and Goblins as the newest and most exciting way to play at Price Picks. The squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. So you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. So go to pricepicks.com and use the code LOCKEDONNBA to get a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricepicks.com slash LOCKEDONNBA. The code is LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. Let's smash into the next game for Thursday. We're looking at the Philadelphia 76ers. Should have been a marquee matchup, but it won't be. They'll go on and take on the Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee. Philadelphia go Thursday, Saturday, and then four games next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. The Bucks have Thursday, Sunday this week, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday the following week. Embiid is out. Melton is out. Covington is out. Middleton just got downgraded to out again. 
Doc Rivers keeps giving us the most nonsense answers regarding this. This is what are we doing? Why are we we're five weeks into his ankle sprain? Any all we've heard is oh, he's out for a day. Any idea? Obviously, we're dropping Chris Middleton. Uh, oh, yeah, you have to. From here on out, you're talking like they don't play until Sunday. So that's in the next 11 days, you've got four games. Max, limited minutes, back-to-back. So that's three games, Max. Absolute jack for Chris Middleton. Get that garbage out of here! Marjorie Beauchamp missed the last game as well. He's questionable, but that does not really matter. What we do want to watch is the thick hogsman, Tobias Harris, who's been putrid, absolutely putrid. You would think, without Joel Embiid, that Harris was able, would able to be able to do a little bit more. And he sort of has. The usage has jumped up slightly, but his free throw attempts have gone from three a game down to like 1.8. Some of that is the refereeing. Yeah. His assist rate has fallen significantly. His shooting numbers are abs- absolutely in the toilet. And, again, inexplicably, he can't hit free throws. He's at 88% for the season, Harris. He's at like 73% over the last month. Why? I've got no idea. He's at 30% from three and like 46% from two. Just everything is created when there was an opportunity to get more shots. And he has taken more shots. Just none of them go in. My guy, can you turn something around? For the Bucks, Bob Portis is, again, that's not a great schedule. For Milwaukee, five games, 11 nights. Is Portis a, a must roster guy? I don't think he is. But I want to see what he's able to do here. Obviously, same with Brook Lopez. Kyle Lowry is getting that boost at the moment with the injuries to Melton. Uh, he's not for everybody, Lowry, obviously, but his ability to generate assists and steals is useful. And Leaky Beasley is getting that boost with Chris Middleton out. He is a fringe guy. We know this. You don't want to hold him after Thursday's game, Beasley, but the ability to get points and threes makes him at least streamable in for that one. The Dallas Mavericks and the Oklahoma City Thunder is our next game up. The Mavericks are playing on Wednesday, so they're coming in on a back-to-back and then they go Thursday, Sunday this week, but only two games next week, Tuesday, Thursday, which is obviously rough, meaning that the last three games of next week, they do not play. You're having the Thursday and then Friday, Saturday off is not good. And then they don't play Monday, don't play Wednesday. So it is a pretty rough... After Wednesdays, after this back-to-back, it's a pretty rough run of things. This is why I was like, if you can take an equivalent player, Jokic, Shea, Embiid, Halliburton in the first round, I wouldn't have taken Luka in that spot. Now, Luke has actually improved all of his, or nearly all of his numbers, and I didn't expect him to do that necessarily. But this was why I just, if I could find an equivalent player, I wouldn't have taken Luca in the top four because now we've got two games here. Now, if that is your finals matchup, just a quick thing, make sure your commissioner has the can't cut list turned off because you are cutting Kyrie and every Maverick player after Thursday. You're cutting Luca. Right? You have to. There's no point to hold him. But in some, there's going to be some league where the commissioner is dumb and has this can't cut list, which is a stupid concept to begin with. They're going to have this can't cut list installed and you can't drop Doncic. It's, it's, it, it's going to be a big problem for you. I know for somebody, someone will complain about this. I'm t- giving you advance warning. Get your can't cut list turned off if your finals are next week. The Thunder play Thursday, Saturday this week and then they go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday next week. The only guy that we have on the injury report at the moment, and Dallas do play Wednesday, so something could pop up, is the Bronco Jalen Williams who missed the last game with an ankle injury, and they started Gordon Haywood in his place. Um, you could stream Haywood or Kaysen Wallace or Lou Dort if Bronco's out. Josh Giddy has been playing more of late, and he did step up with Williams out, so that's something to watch. And I think Josh Giddy's been the player that's been on my radar the most this season because it's been really hard to figure out. You know, low minutes, and then when his minutes even dropped even further, his production per minute went up. And they go, oh, well, that's looking good now. His minutes are back up, and it's just all over the place every single game where he's back to being a 12-team league guy. They're also giving more run to Daniel Gafford. We'll see what happens if Gafford has a night where he doesn't hit literally every shot. Do they push him back to 17 minutes and go more to Kleber? We'll find out. Gordon Haywood could get a boost for the Thunder uh, if Jalen Williams is out and he is the guy that they slide into the starting lineup. The final game of the day is the Knicks and the Blazers. Um, New York plays Thursday, Saturday. Portland goes Thursday, Saturday as well. Of course, Portland is coming in on the back-to-back from uh, Wednesday also. Next week, New York has Monday, Thursday, Saturday. And Portland has that jam-packed schedule again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Julius Randle will be out. Mitchell Robinson will be out. The big question for Portland is Jeremy Grant. He's got a hamstring strain now. So if it was legitimately a hamstring strain, he's definitely not playing Wednesday or Thursday, but I just don't know that. 
I don't know what they're going to do to manipulate this thing. But the fact that they label it strain and not soreness makes me think they're setting up for him not to play both of these games. But at this point, we don't know. Malcolm Brogdon will be out. Jabari Walker's out on Wednesday. He might play on Thursday. This is, would have been an opportunity for him to start with Grant's hamstring really becoming a problem. And Rayan Rupert dealing with some ankle issues, but anything could pop up. Aiton could pop up. Simons could pop up. I, I think that Scoot will play the back-to-back, but maybe he doesn't. A lot of stuff can happen here. For the Knicks, Preston Achua basically was exclusively a center last game in 24 minutes, backing up Hartenstein, no power forward minutes. As a backup center, he probably won't remain a must-roster guy, but we want to watch that and see what they do and how productive he is in 24 minutes. They're obviously boosting the absolute hell out of Josh Hart. Now, if Ananobi plays 36 minutes instead of 30 minutes that he played in the first game back, where do the six minutes come from? Do they come from Hart's 40 minutes and he goes back to 34? We still hold him, but that cuts a lot off his uh, overall numbers. Scoot Henderson's also getting boosted in the way that I just think they want him to do more, so they'll put the ball in his hands more, more assist opportunities, and hopefully, hopefully more scoring, or not more scoring opportunities, but opportunities that allow those scores to happen for the ball to go in, because that has been a problem for Scooter all season. Today's episode is also brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April the 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, there is no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30, so get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply, and now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitation apply, limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match uh, requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to US customers in good standing. And Robinhood L, uh, Financial LLC is a member of SIPC as a registered broker dealer. So we've looked at the games. Let's look at how the schedule does play out now. Thursday, Friday, where are the back-to-backs? Can we get anything out of it? There are two teams. It's the Clippers and the Suns. We should be very worried about the Kawhi playing both of those games, even Paul George, even James Harden. Could be some shenanigans going on there. Because we've already heard Ty Lue speak said twice over the last five days, we're going to get James some rest. They rested Paul on the weekend. Now Kawhi's got the back problem. Could be some real big opportunities opening up there. Phoenix, we haven't heard anything about Beal and Booker, but maybe. Obviously dealt with quite a few injuries this season. Next four days. So that's the rest of this week. Thursday through to Sunday. The three teams that play three games in four nights are the Clippers, the Suns, and the Wizards. The Wizards should feel all right about Kuzma, uh, Poole, Jones, Kispert probably, Kulabali, Avdia. They're going to play the three and four. It's all about the role for like a Kispert, or even Holmes comes back. The others, there's those question marks, obviously. But Powell and O'Neill, really nice options. There are seven teams that play one game for the rest of the week. Cleveland, Golden State, Indiana, the Lakers, the Grizzlies, the Wolves, and the Kings. So fringe players, like, you know that I've talked about this the whole time, like, is Nas Reed, a maybe 26, 25 minute a night backup, worth it? Probably not. Especially if you drop it before Thursday's game. One game is not enough. The Grizzlies, any of these flyer types, GG Jackson, Jake LaRavia, Goodwin. Um, like if you add Desmond Bain, is he even going to play? I don't know. The Kings and Keegan Murray, or Kevin Herter or Harrison Barnes. The Lakers, is Austin Reeves worth dropping? That's going to depend, but maybe. The Pacers, Neesmith, Nembhard, McConnell. The Warriors with Pajemski, Wiggins. Clay, one game in four nights. The Cavs, Struess, Nyang, Wade, Levert, Okoro. Get the extra two in four nights is a huge W. Nothing really interesting in the five days, but in the next six days, we can look at a couple of things. There's only one team that plays four games in the next six nights, and that's the Wizards. We don't always get such a clear, this is the team, and that's the Wizards. So Bilal, Kispert. And I know you'll be asking, Josh, you mentioned earlier, but what about Tristan Vukcevic? 
I don't think he's going to be available here. I don't think he's coming straight across ready to play. I believe it might be in a week or so. That's my understanding, but I don't know that. I don't think we worry about that. If Holmes was available, we'd love it, but he's not. So we look at Bilal. If for some reason Denny's available, we look at um, Kispert. Deeper leagues, there's been like 12 minutes a night of Patrick Baldwin Jr., so keep an eye on that. And there's a million teams. Well, not a million. There is nine that played two games in six nights. Cleveland, Golden State, the Pacers, the Lakers, the Grizzlies, the Bucks, the Thunder, the Kings, and the Raptors. So your fringies, maybe it's a Jonte Porter, a grade A dick. I've already talked about Kings, but Gordon Hayward, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort. Like it's two games in six nights. You can't hold for that. The Bucks, Beasley, Portis, Lopez, Middleton, the Grizzlies, anyone, basically. The Lakers. Anyone that's not LeBron AD, probably D the Pacers, Warriors, Cavs, we've spoken about already, but that is a really, really light period for these guys. And it's a lot of teams. It's worth noting over the next seven days, Thursday through Wednesday, because again, we always love to talk weeks, but we often ignore random seven-day stretches. But I'm going to start focusing more on that. Now, there are nine teams that play four games in the next seven days, which is obviously really low. If we entered into a week, so week 21, and go, all right, here's the schedule. There are seven teams that play four games or nine teams that play four games. You go, man, that's nothing. And it's, it is nothing. You're right. Boston, Detroit, Clippers, Heat, Sixers, Suns, Blazers, Jazz, Wizards, four games in the next week. And the Lakers play two in the next week. So not only do the Lakers have the two-game week in the calendrical, which is not a real word, but pertaining to a calendar. I invented it. Shout out to Shakespeare and me. Two games in that week 20, Monday to Sunday. But now we've pushed from Thursday to Wednesday, the next seven days. Well, not the next seven days, but another seven-day period. Still two more games. It's terrible. It's a really bad schedule. Again, you can get a plus two in a week's period over a Lakers guy. If we extend it out to an eight-game period, eight-day period, there are three teams who play five games. Phoenix, Utah, who we've suffered through some nonsense with, and the Wizards. Let's talk Utah because Taylor Hendricks looks like he might be back. It's an obvious one with Keontae George. It might give you some level of faith in holding old mate Walker Kessler, but you're seeing some shenaniganizing happening. Jordan Clarkson's now missing practice with a groin injury. Him and Markin were the two guys that they sat down last season. Markin's already out, and now Clarkson's appearing. Just watch this. I don't know that Markin's done. It's such a good schedule, you probably don't want to drop here, but like it might be really rough, but it might mean that Hendricks and Sensible, and obviously George start to step up into real value. And there's a bunch of teams that play three games in eight nights. Charlotte, Cleveland, the Warriors, the Pacers, the Grizzlies, the Wolves, Thunder, Spurs, Raptors, and then the Lakers have two games in eight nights. So switching out Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell, with two games in eight nights for a Sun, Jazz, or Wizards player, that's a plus three with one and waiver add, which you don't really get very often. A five for a two. It's worth worth uh, paying attention to. Let's look at streams for Thursday. Yahoo Points Leagues. We are going to a Men Thompson. Was the lower minutes last game a matchup thing? Was the lower minutes a because he hurt his ankle slightly, even though he played through it? Don't know. But they're going against a small team, I'm guessing, with no homes or unlikely to have homes. So do we get more men? We've got Scooter there. I'm guessing that Scoot plays. I've got Dylan Brooks there. He's going to take more shots. Al Horford with no Porzingis. Jock Landau's there. And Tamani Kamara as a Yahoo Points option, trying to cover different roster percentage uh, zones. For ESPN, a lot of the same names. We're going to Amen Thompson. You've got Scooter Henderson, Dylan Brooks, Al Horford, Jock Landale. Corey Kispert's uh, jumped up there ahead of Tamani Kamara as well. For your ESPN point scoring, because they do heavily weight the three-point shot a lot more in that format. In category leagues, who is the points guy we're looking to stream in for points? Again, we go standard and deep. Scoot, I think he's a points guy to look at. I think Corey Kispert is a, a deeper points league guy or deeper points category guy to look at. For threes, Norman Powell and Corey Kispert are the two guys that cover it off there. Remember, we already talked about the Wizards and the Clippers not only having that value in streaming them in for Thursday, but a really nice short-term schedule. And Powell could get that real boost with some uncertainty around Harden and more specifically Kawhi. For big man stats, rebounds. Yeah, I know he's not a big man, but a man Thompson grabs him. And his teammate Jock Landau grabs him. So if you want rebounds, head to Houston. For blocks, Derek Lively. Is available in a lot of spots. And then Luke Cornett. I do think that Cornett plays over Tillman as the backup to Horford, but they could easily go with Tillman, so be cautious of that. For guard stats, I'm going with Scooter Henderson. And then for deeper leagues, Patrick Beverly. 
They give him a few extra minutes. There's not many great assist guys available. Maybe you could say Kyle Lowry, but I wanted to go to someone under 25%. So Beverly's there. Steals, we go to Amen Thompson, and we go to Matisse Thibel, who we know he's going to get steals, but he does have lack of contribution in other categories. For percentages, for field goals, I'm going to Derek Lively, and then deeper leagues, Luke Cornette. For free throw percentage, Scoot Henderson, and deeper leagues, we do go to Kyle Lowry on this one. And lastly, we just look at the streams of the day. For 10-teamer, I do think it's a Men Thompson. For 12, Dylan Brooks, although that's it's tough, man. I, I, I did Brooks, all the numbers came out looking good, and I went, oh, really? But they did, so I guess maybe. The 14-teamer, we go to Luke Cornette, and the 16-teamer, I'm going to go to Tamani Kamara. But you, when we're talking the last three days, of the, four days of the week, look at categories. Don't look at overall value as a general. We are looking at categories to stream in to get that W. Guys, that'll bring me to the end of the show. Don't forget to go and hit that thumbs up over on YouTube. Go and hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and of course, leave any comments down below. Um, unless they're negative comments, then keep it to yourself. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.